Hello, I'm Will Gunn, and I'm happy to be joining you all today for Fletzy Talks. I want to talk with you about something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's the idea of what it takes to lead right, right from where you are. And in doing so, what I want to do is examine some concepts that we have with respect to leadership and exactly what it means. First of all, there are a lot of definitions for leadership. I mean, what is it, after all, that leaders actually do? Well, for our purposes today at least, we're going to be talking about leadership from the perspective of a leader is someone who influences others in order to accomplish objectives. There's a question, an age-old question. Are leaders born or are they made? Well, as far as I know, everyone's been born. So I have to say both. Everybody's born, but you know, there are some people that seemingly come out of the womb with leadership gifts, talents, and abilities. And there are other people who don't necessarily display what others would say are leadership traits. But I am convinced, based upon my experience, that everyone, absolutely everyone, can improve and develop as a leader. So can anybody be a leader? Absolutely, positively, yes they can. There are some leadership myths out there, and I'd like to expose them. First, there's a myth that in order to be an effective leader, you need to be a good speaker. Not true. There's also a myth that you need to be charismatic in order to be an effective leader, someone that just draws other people. Not true at all. Or that you need to manage or supervise other folks. No, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Or that you need followers. John Maxwell says that if you're out and you're, you're moving around and you look behind you and, and there's nobody that's following you, then you're just out for a walk as opposed to leading. Well, there are hidden leaders. Leaders in positions where they don't have subordinates, they don't have anyone on their staff, but nevertheless, they are leaders. When I came to FLETC, I discovered that you all have some core values here. And those core values are known by the acrostic RISE, standing for respect, integrity, service, and excellence. I thought about those in the context of what it takes to be a right where you are leader. And here are some of the attributes of right from where you are leaders. And I find that they are absolutely compatible with Fletzi's core values. I serve. These are the attributes that I want to examine with you today. I serve starting that I, just like the I in RISE, is for integrity. On your screen here, you have two people. You may or you may not recognize either of these folks. The guy there in the Navy uniform, Senator John McCain, back from his Navy days. As you may know, John McCain was a prisoner of war. His father, he's, well, actually John McCain is the son of an admiral and the grandson of a Navy Admiral. John McCain was a jet pilot, and in Vietnam, he was shot down over North Vietnam. And the North Vietnamese offered him the opportunity for early release. They did this, of course, for propaganda purposes because they wanted to make the most of the fact that John McCain's father, who had been put in charge of all U.S. Naval forces in the Pacific, was now in charge. And so they wanted to make hay of the fact that his son was getting out when others were still prisoners of war. John McCain displayed integrity, wholeness, completeness, being true to himself because he refused that offer, even though it had made life a lot easier for him. And afterwards, believe me, things got a lot tougher for him. 
The person on the other side, Frank Serpico, New York City police officer who in the 1960s and 1970s exposed rampant corruption in the city of New York's police department. His revelations led to a, a mayoral commission that started to clean up that department. It wasn't easy. In fact, Frank Serpico ended up getting shot. He got shot because it seems that his fellow policemen set him up. Yet, he felt that something else besides his own comfort was more important than just going along to get along. He was a man of integrity. Seeing, you've probably heard that great leaders are visionaries, people that can see their desired futures. John F. Kennedy, in 1961 announced that the United States was going to put a man on the moon before the end of the decade, and it came to be. Martin Luther King that you can see there. We all know him for his most famous speech, the I Have a Dream speech, where he talked about people being judged based on the contents of their character as opposed to the color of their skin. But that's just one part of seeing. Leaders, right where you are leaders, are people that notice the details about what's going on around them, the people around them, as well as the circumstances around them. Frank Wills is displayed there. You may not be familiar with Frank Wills, but on the night of June 17, 1972, Frank Wills was a private security guard in the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. When he was making his rounds and he came across a door that had been left ajar and there was a piece of duct tape that was covering the, the knob on that door, not the knob, but the latch on that door. Well, he took it off and he continued with his rounds, but he came back to that same location about a half hour later and he saw that more duct tape had been applied. He called the police, and that was the beginning of the Watergate scandal, a second-rate burglary gone astray because a low-paid private security guard saw something, and he responded to what he saw. Engaged, the E in I serve. You probably recognize that person in the middle, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, originally from Albania, felt a call on her life where she went to India and she went into a convent there and she was committed, she was committed to a life of service, but God was calling her to something more. In fact, Mother Teresa, while in India, saw the poor she saw the dying around her, the sick around her, and she established a new order. There were times that she felt tempted to go back to the convent where life had been a lot easier, but she didn't do it because she was actually absolutely engaged in her calling. Kathy Lanier was the first woman police chief for Washington, D.C. Kathy Lanier dropped out of the ninth grade and had a child, but she didn't let that stop her. She went back to school. She got her bachelor's degree. She got a master's degree. At one point, she joined the police, off, uh, the police uh, department, and she went on to be named chief of police by the age of 39 by a former mayor of the District of Columbia. Today, Kathy Lanier serves as a senior vice president for security for the National Football League. The gentleman in the sailor's uniform is Doris Miller, also known as Dory Miller. Dory Miller grew up in Waco, Texas, the son of a sharecropper. He joined the Navy in order to see the world. In those days, 
African Americans were only allowed a few positions in the Navy. And he was in one of those positions, the position of a cook or a messman. On the morning of December 7th, 1941, Dory Miller made history as he became engaged. He left his post as a messman and he manned guns on board his ship when the United States facility at Pearl Harbor came under attack. He was a person who wasn't just content to focus on his job. He wanted to know more and he did more by getting involved and making a difference on that fateful day. Respect. I trust that everyone recognizes Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, a seamstress, known for her role in kicking off the Montgomery bus boycott. On an evening after a long day in, of, at work in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks, a seamstress who had also been active as a secretary with the local branch of the NAACP, she got on a bus. In those days, buses in Montgomery had seats near the front that were reserved for whites and blacks were expected to only sit behind a certain point on the bus. Well, she sat in the first row of seats behind the, the section that was reserved for whites. But the bus started to fill up. A white gentleman got on the bus and he expected Rosa Parks to move. She refused. She found that she was deserving of the respect and she demanded respect. She was arrested and the rest, we could say, is simply history. Because as a result of Mrs. Parks getting arrested, it kicked off the Montgomery bus boycott, which brought about change. I doubt seriously if many of you or if any of you know the other gentleman. That's William Campbell. Mr. Campbell is someone that I'm familiar with because when I was at the Air Force Academy as a cadet in the late 1970s, Mr. Campbell was a janitor at the Academy. One day, an upperclassman was looking through a book and he came across a passage about a guy by the name of William Campbell from Pueblo, Colorado, who had performed historic acts during World War II. That person, it turned out, was his squadron janitor, William Campbell. He approached Mr. Campbell and found out that yes, indeed, it was Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell, a humble man, didn't bring any attention to himself, but he proves the, the adage that you never know who you're serving with, you never know who may be among you. A winner or recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor, serving as a janitor, a person deserving of respect, but not just because of the fact that he received the Congressional Medal of Honor. He deserved respect because he was a human being. We're all deserving of respect. Virtue. Virtue, doing those things that are right. That's at the heart of what virtue means. Maya Angelou says essential that essentially that courage is the most important of all the virtues because without it, you can't practice any of the other virtues consistently. You can practice them erratically, but not consistently, only with courage. In one of my prior jobs, I was the first chief defense counsel for detainees at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. It wasn't a popular job, but it was a job that gave me a lot of room to think about this whole concept of courage. I came across a quote from a gentleman by the name of Ambrose Redmoon. And that quote said essentially, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the belief that something else is more important than that fear, courage. We live in a time where courage is vitally needed. Excellence. In the center, you have a picture 
of some Tuskegee Airmen. The Tuskegee Airmen organization was formed right after the start of World War II in Tuskegee, Alabama at a place called Moden Field. They are the only unit in U.S. military history during World War II that achieves a perfect bomber protection record. They performed bomber escort duty. In other words, their jobs was to fly fighters which accompanied bombers to their uh, bombing targets. They never lost a single bomber while performing those duties. They displayed excellence. The lady with the glasses, that's Katherine Johnson, a gifted mathematician from West Virginia State College, now known as West Virginia State University. Katherine Johnson, you may have heard about her from the movie Hidden Figures. A human computer hired by NASA who made a profound difference. She was so gifted in the work that she did that when men started to go into space, they wanted Katherine Johnson performing their calculations. In fact, John Glenn, the first American to do a complete orbit, he, he wanted Katherine Johnson to verify the figures that the electronic computer had come up with. He trusted her because of her excellence. He didn't trust the computers quite yet. The other woman is Val Demings, the first woman police chief for Orlando, Florida. She grew up in Orlando, she grew up in Jacksonville, Florida as the daughter of a, of a maid and as the daughter of a gardener who had also worked in the orange groves of Central Florida. Val Demings displayed great excellence in her work. And today she serves as a congresswoman having been elected in November of 2016. I serve. It's been exactly 200 years this month since Frederick Douglass was born. Frederick Douglass, born into slavery, became a great abolitionist, a great orator, a publisher, an advocate not only for the abolition of slavery, but also for women's rights. Frederick Douglass was a person who demonstrated the fact everywhere he went that you can lead right from where you are. So remember, if you want to be a right from where you are leader, then be a person of integrity, a person who sees, a person who is engaged, someone who respects everyone, someone who is virtuous, a person of virtue, and be a person of excellence. So put it in more practical terms. How can you lead from right where you are? I'm reminded of a story by a guy by the name of Lauren Isley. He tells a story of a man who's out for a walk along the beach. And off in the distance, he sees a human figure. And he doesn't know if that person is dancing or if they're exercising. He doesn't know what the person is doing. But as he approaches, he sees that the person is bending down, picking up something, and throwing it into the ocean. And as he gets closer, he sees that it's a young man. And he asks the young man, so what are you doing? And the young man explains, well, the tide came in and it washed up all these starfish up onto the shore. And so the sun is coming up, and if I don't throw them back in, they're going to die. The older gentleman displaying his wisdom, he said, there are starfish all along the shore, all along this beach. You can't possibly make a difference. There are too many of them. With that, the young man bent down, picked up another starfish, and he tossed it into the ocean and said, I made a difference for that one. I encourage you, be a lead from where you are, leader. Serve with integrity. Serve from right where you are. 
This has been Will Gunn for Fletzy Talks.